Welcome to a deep dive, everybody, and this one is a real head-scratcher. We're diving into the case of the missing Jane Finn. And this isn't just any missing person case, oh no. This one has it all. International intrigue, possible espionage, the works. It's giving very much history could been rewritten vibes. Yeah, right? yeah, good. And to make things even more interesting, the only source we have for this case is a collection of, well, let's call them excerpts, from this document labeled Christie.pdf. Sounds like we're in for a wild ride. Buckle up, because here we go. So picture this. It's post-World War I, London. Ah, the Roaring Twenties. Not quite yet, but we're getting there. Yeah. The war's over. But things are still pretty shaky. People are trying to find their footing, you know, and there's this feeling of, like, anything could happen. A breeding ground for opportunity and maybe a little mischief. Definitely a bit of mischief. And that's where we meet Tommy and Tuppence. Our protagonists. You got it. Two young adventurers, full of ambition, maybe a little naive. A dangerous combination. Who are itching to make a name for themselves. So what kind of mischief do they get up to? Well, they come across this advertisement. It's pretty vague. You know, something like, willing to do anything, go anywhere. Sounds intriguing, but also a little ominous, don't you think? Right. But Tommy and Tuppence, they don't shy away from a challenge. And that's what sets this whole thing in motion. Precisely. Little do they know, this little advertisement is going to plunge them headfirst into this whole mystery surrounding the disappearance of, you guessed it, Jane Finn. And Jane Finn, tell us a bit more about her. Who was she? So from what we can gather, she's a young woman, vanished into thin air a few years back. No one knows what happened to her. Some say she ran off. Others whisper about foul play. Plenty of whispers, I bet. Oh, tons. And then there's this Mr. Whittington. Seems he knew Jane somehow, mm. but he's not talking. Very yeah. suspicious. A whole cast of shady characters. And you have no idea. And if that wasn't enough, we got another name thrown into the mix. Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown. Hmm. Yeah. Sounds awfully generic. That's what makes it so eerie. Like, who is this guy? Is Mr. Brown even his real name? Yeah. It's giving very much Secret Society operating the shadows vibes. The plot thickens. <laughs> but it gets even more interesting. We also have a connection to one of the most tragic events in history, the sinking of the Lusitania. That's right, and apparently Jane Finn was on board. Not only that, but she was entrusted with something incredibly important, a draft treaty. Now this is where things get really interesting. What could be in that treaty that's so important even years after the war? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? But we can assume it's something that could shake things up on a global scale. High stakes, shady characters, a missing heiress. Sounds like Tommy and Tuppence are in way over their heads. That's what I'm thinking. So they've got this mystery on their hands, this missing woman, and their first lead is... Mr. Whittington, I presume. Bingo. Remember, Tommy and Tuppence, they're young and eager. So they decide to pay Mr. Whittington a little visit. And how does that go? I'm guessing not quite as planned. You could say that. Tuppence, bless her heart. She's a bit of a firecracker and a talented actress to boot, so she hatches this plan to pose as Jane Finn herself. Talk about a bold move. Right. But it doesn't quite go according to plan. They get a taste of the danger surrounding this case and realize it's bigger than just finding a missing person. It's like they've stumbled onto a conspiracy. And it's only just beginning. They soon cross paths with this character, Mr. Carter. He seems to know a lot more than he's letting on. Oh, Mr. Carter, he's an enigma wrapped in a riddle. Right. But he does confirm one thing. There's definitely a shadowy organization at play here, pulling the strings from the shadows. The question is, what are their motives? What are they after? That's what we're going to try to figure out. It's like they've stumbled on something straight out of a spy novel, sure. right? Absolutely, and they're right in the thick of it. And the deeper they dig, the more this Mr. Brown character pops up. Right, like he's everywhere and nowhere at the same time. Exactly. A phantom. A ghost. <laughs> but remember, we talked about that name, Mr. Brown. It's so ordinary, so incredibly common. Almost like it's meant to be forgettable, right? Precisely. It's a deliberate tactic to make him untraceable. Anonymity is power, especially in the world of espionage. Makes you wonder, if they're trying so hard to hide him, how dangerous could this Mr. Brown really be? Well, that's what Tommy and Tuppence are trying to find out. They realize they need more to go on, so they decide to focus on what they do know. Which brings us back to Mr. Whittington. Right, and that little rendezvous he had at the Lion's Tea Room. You know, the one with that suspicious character, Boris. Ah, yes, Boris. That meeting was a goldmine, wasn't it? 
we start hearing whispers of Ireland, propaganda, and this mysterious woman, Flossie, who is apparently a master of disguise. Even voices. Oh yeah, Flossie. I'm getting some serious false Jane Finn vibes from her, don't you think? It's certainly a possibility, but what struck me was how casually they tossed around the name Mr. Brown in that conversation. It's almost like they want people to think it's meaningless. Right, exactly. By making him seem unremarkable, he becomes invisible, hidden in plain sight. Clever, but also kind of terrifying when you think about it. But Tommy's not giving up that easily. He's like a dog with a bone, and he manages to track down where Whittington went after that meeting. Bournemouth. And that's where things really start to unravel. Tommy, bless his heart, decides to call in some backup, brings Julius into the fold. Good old Julius, always up for an adventure. Though I think he may have a bit of a crush on Jane Finn from that photograph he saw. But anyway, Julius ends up at this nursing home in Bournemouth, right? Right, and stumbles headfirst into a secret meeting. Talk about being the right place at the right time, or maybe the wrong one, depending on how you look at it. This meeting, though, gives us a glimpse into the true nature of this organization. It's not just about some missing documents or even a missing person anymore. They were talking about revolutions, general strikes. They want to cause chaos. Exactly. This organization isn't just some small-time operation. They have much bigger ambitions. They want to disrupt the entire world order. And that draft treaty, with its potential to ignite international conflict, is their weapon. It's clear now that these people, they're dangerous. But while all this is happening, Tuppence has managed to infiltrate the inner circle, so to speak. Oh, yes, Tuppence. She's a brave one, going undercover as a maid for the enigmatic Mrs. Vandermeier. Mrs. Vandermeier is a real piece of work. Charming, intelligent, but with a dangerous aura. And let's not forget her undeniable connection to Jane Finn. It's a risky game Tuppence is playing, getting close to a woman like that. And her instincts prove to be right on the money. Remember that argument she overhears? Mrs. Vandermeier and Boris going at it. How could I forget? That was a turning point. It confirmed their suspicions about Mrs. Vandermeier's involvement in this whole mess. Right. But it also revealed that there are cracks in this organization. They're not all on the same page. There's talk of betrayal. And this Mr. Brown figure, it seems even Mrs. Vandermeier is afraid of him. It's like a game of chess. Everyone making their moves, vying for power. But Mr. Brown, he's the one calling the shots. He holds all the cards. But back to Tuppence, because things are about to get very dicey for her. Mrs. Vandermeier, clever woman she is, figures out that Tuppence isn't who she says she is. Oh, no, this can't be good. They're not good at all. Suddenly, Tuppence finds herself staring down the barrel of a gun. Talk about a cliffhanger. Right. But Cuppence, ever the quick thinker, manages to talk her way out of it. For now, anyway. She tells Mrs. Vandermeier that she knows where the treaty is. A desperate gamble. It was. But it buys her some time. However, fate, it seems, has other plans. Because shortly after that, Mrs. Vandermeier is found dead. It's like, was it really an accident? Or did someone silence her to keep her quiet? Well, the finger seems to point to Julius, at least at first. After all, he did bring that brandy to the flat. Right, and we know Mrs. Vandermeier wasn't opposed to a little nightcap. Exactly. It makes you question everything you thought you knew about him. Is Julius really who he seems? Or is he playing his own game? That's a good question. But before we can even process that, we get another curveball. Jane Finn is found alive. Talk about a twist. But of course, it's not that straightforward, is it? Not even close. It turns out Jane's suffering from amnesia. She doesn't remember anything past the sinking of the Lusitania. So close, yet so far. They have Jane. But the memories, the answers they're looking for, are still lost. Like trying to catch smoke. It's incredibly frustrating for everyone involved. But that's when Sir James, ever the strategist, sees an opportunity. Sir James, always thinking a few steps ahead, what does he have up his sleeve? He thinks that Jane's amnesia, it might be the key to unlocking the truth. So he comes up with this plan. What kind of plan? to basically recreate the sinking of the Lusitania. You're kidding. Are we talking about a full-blown reenactment here? Pretty much. The hope is that by putting Jane back in that environment, even a simulated one, it might trigger her memory. It's a long shot, but desperate times call for desperate measures. No kidding. But remember, Mr. Brown is still out there pulling strings. And he's not just going to sit back and let this happen. Right. Which brings us to that telegram Tuppence receives. Seemingly from Tommy, asking her to meet him. And we know how much Tuppence trusts Tommy. Of course, she rushes off to help. Right into Mr. Brown's trap. 
It was only a matter of time until he made his move. And Tommy, he gets this telegram too. It says that Tuppence is dead, her body found washed ashore. A cruel trick designed to break his spirit. It almost works. But Tommy, he's observant, and he notices this discrepancy in the telegram. Remember the detail Tuppence told the page boy about going to Charing Cross? But the telegram said King's Cross, a tiny detail, easily missed. Exactly. But for Tommy, it was a lifeline. He knew then that Tuppence was still alive, but being held captive. So the search continues. They managed to track her down to this remote house, the moat house. But by the time they get there... Too late, as usual. It seems so. Mm -hmm. The house is deserted. The only thing they find is Tuppence's brooch lying on the ground. Oh, no. That doesn't sound good. It wasn't looking good. But then, out of the blue, Julius receives a telegram. Another telegram. At this point, I'd be afraid to open one. This one's different. It's from someone named Mr. J. And get this. Mr. J claims to have information about Jane Finn. Mr. J. Another mysterious character pops up. This case just keeps getting weirder. Tell me about it. And this is where Sir James comes back into the picture. Because guess who they find with Mr. J? Sir James, I don't even know what to believe anymore. Right. It's like he's playing both sides. But then, just like that, everything clicks into place. Mr. J, this mysterious informant, it's Jane Finn. She's Mr. J mind-blown. But why all the secrecy? It makes sense when you think about it. She's been through a lot, she's still recovering, and she doesn't know who to trust. So she disguises herself, reaches out to Julius, hoping he's the one person she can rely on. And that's when everything comes out. Jane, she tells them everything. The kidnapping, the imprisonment, how Mrs. Vandemeyer was behind it all. And the treaty. The thing everyone's been after this whole time. Hidden in plain sight, tucked away in a picture frame. Jane's one clever cookie. She is. But as she's telling her story, Sir James, he makes this shocking accusation. An accusation? About whom? Julius. He thinks Julius is the mastermind behind all of this. Whoa, now that's a twist I didn't see coming. Neither did I. But Sir James, he's convinced. He even has evidence a photograph of Annette, the maid who helped Tommy escape, found in Julius's possession. Well, that does make him look suspicious. For sure. But Tommy, he refuses to believe it. He trusts Julius. And his gut tells him something else is going on. Always trust your gut. But how can they prove Julius is innocent if he's being framed like this? That's the million dollar question. But just when things are looking their bleakest, they get a message from Tuppence. Tuppence? She's alive! How? She managed to sneak out a message, concealed inside a letterweight, told them everything. Where she was being held, who was holding her. And who was behind it all along. I bet it's not Julius. You got it. The real Mr. Brown the one pulling all the strings from the very beginning. It was Sir James all along. Sir James? No way. I mean, how could we have been so blind? To plead everyone, even us. But thankfully, justice prevails in the end. Sir James is exposed, Tuppence is safe, and they recover the treaty. Well, that's a relief. But I have to ask, what about Jane? Does she ever get her memories back? You know, that part's a bit unclear. Our excerpts end there. Yeah. But hey, that's the nature of these deep dives, right? Sometimes we're left with more questions than answers. That's true. But one thing's for sure, this case, with all its twists and turns, it really makes you think about the nature of truth, deception, and the lengths people will go to for power. Absolutely. It reminds us that things aren't always what they seem, and sometimes the people you think you can trust the most are the ones you need to watch out for. But it also shows that even in the face of overwhelming odds, courage, determination, and a little bit of luck can go a long way. Until next time, Keep exploring, keep questioning, and we'll see you on our next deep dive.